All right, I want to uh, start before we get into the entire New Japan show by talking about Eddie Kingston here. Is he okay? I want to be very careful with how I say this because I know how people report what we report, okay? Okay. So when Eddie took that suplex, he took a suplex off the apron and Gabe Kidd in their, uh, they had a match. It was no rope, uh, no holds barred, uh, last man standing. He could only win by knockout. And at the end of the match, there was a table set up between the ring and the guardrail. And Gabe Kidd, they were handcuffed together. Gabe Kidd gives him the big suplex off the apron. And if you watch it, Eddie's leg hit that barricade so hard. I know. It scared, it scared the hell out of me. It goes, but bam and just shoots back the other way. And he immediately grabbed his leg. And that's the finish. And Eddie is then down for a long time. I mean, minutes on end, he's there. And the referees come out, and there are people out talking to him, and he is not moving. And so, you know, at first I was like, oh, man, this ain't good. And then finally, finally, uh, Jack Perry starts coming out on the ramp, and Eddie manages to uh, to get into the ring, and he does stand up, and then the Young Bucks show up, and they jump him from behind, and they all stomp him down, they give him a beating, they give him the uh, BTE trigger, and then they uh, talk about the pay-per-view that's coming up. So, whole thing, you know, this angle was as it was planned to be, and uh, Eddie did hurt his leg. So, I don't know how bad his leg is hurt, but when he went into the barricade and went down, one of the reasons it took so long for Jack Perry to come out is they were making sure that Eddie was going to be able to get in the ring. And so... You can even hear, I'm pretty sure on on on, uh, on the live feed, you could hear him say something like, I think I can make it to the back or something like that. And I think he said, I, can, I think I can make it to the ring. Something so, like that. Yeah, yeah. But he said he said something like to one of the referees that I don't yeah. think you were supposed to hear. And he managed to get into the ring, and they were able to do the angle. But uh, he was limping bad backstage. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, the fact that he's walking around, like hopefully he's going to be all right, but it could be a serious injury. We don't know yet. But he definitely hurt his leg when he hit it on that guardrail. And there was concern that he wouldn't be able to do the angle afterwards. So if it's funny because they um, on and, and again, I haven't even seen all of Rampage, but um, on Rampage, they did an interview you know, on, on Dynamite, they are on, on Collision, I should say, they, they did the angle where uh, Claudio wa- walked out on, on Brian Danielson because he was mad at Brian Danielson for teaming with Eddie. If Eddie's out, then in theory, Claudio would be the guy who would replace him in that match. But at the same time, they're clearly doing an angle with Claudio and Danielson. Yeah. Yeah, so, at the beginning of Collision, Danielson's just cutting this promo, and uh, and and Claudio just leaves. Yeah. And, you know, they, they shot him leaving, but the announcers made no mention of it whatsoever. They didn't talk about it, but you clearly, it was supposed to be part of the, the storyline. But, yeah, hopefully he's okay to make it to uh, the pay-per-view because I think that's the... Uh, it, it's, it is very clearly it's, it's important part of the I think that's his next big match. Um, did they announce anything for, for Eddie on Wednesday? No. I don't, think, I don't think they did. So No, no, no. We- Wednesday's a really big show, though. It is a... Uh, There's a lot of good wrestling on Wednesday. There's a lot of good wrestling tonight. Yes. T- tonight, tonight, the collision, I thought, was a really a hell of a show. And the New Japan show was really a hell of a show. And SmackDown was a good show, too. Yeah. Well, we'll start with uh, the New Japan show, and then we'll talk about the lineups and all of the news and everything like that. Uh, Ishii, Rocky Romero, DKC against Evil, Ren Narita, and Jack Perry. Uh, evil hit everything is evil for the pin. Which led to an angle, by the way, in the main event, as we'll get to, where he is next in line for Moxley's yeah, IWGP yeah. title. Yeah, so um, I don't know when that... That might be... God, that might be Dominion. Well, I hope it's not Forbidden Door. No, it's, I, w- I would think it's D- Dominion. <laughs> yes. I think Forbidden Door... Well, one of them, I think, that they're going to do to Keshida. Yeah. Either... Uh, they started that, and then he hasn't been on TV since. But Moxley hasn't been on TV that, you know, because he has to, they couldn't really hit that one hard because Moxley had to, had to win tonight before they could really hit that one hard. So hopefully on Wednesday, you know, when Moxley's in that tag, that that's whatever they're going to do with Moxley at the pay-per-view, which I think, again, we're getting, we're getting a crunch time to the pay-per-view. So I think that Wednesday that they'll probably have that match set up, whatever it's going to be. 
Should mention, by the way, that I only saw about half of this match because trying to order this pay per view oh my God. was you... a nightmare. I did finally get it. Like, you, you could know... only order it on a desktop computer. So, if you're planning on watching it on Apple TV, your iPad, your iPhone, whatever, you can't order it there. You have to order on a desktop. I couldn't get to the site. Guess what? This... Yes. Guess what? I have three desktops. And I couldn't order on any one. I could only order on my laptop. But once I ordered on my laptop, I could watch it on all my desktops. Yes. Once you order, you can watch it wherever. But you have but to. But I mean, order it was it. like it was like it was like I had the whole thing ordered, and then it, you have to press that button. What's the button? The you know the confirm or whatever. Yeah. And the button didn't work. Yes, that happened to me several times. What happened to me for twenty straight minutes? Yeah. Well, hopefully that meant they got some orders. I mean, everyone <laughs> buying at the last second. But the other issue with the show, which actually got better later, was the the audio was terrible. Like you could barely well, the cr- hear the announcers for the first part of the show. Well, the, at the end, the crowd miking was terrible. I thought, yeah, because because you could tell in like the, in all those matches at the end, like especially, um, you know, every every match at the end, you could see the crowd going pretty crazy, and you could hear almost nothing. So it was like you're watching you're watching a, a match and i'm kind of like watching this match and it, it's it's i'm getting into the matches because the work was was really really good in all these matches but it was not like the crowd was helping the match like this would have been the opposite of that france show in the sense that the france show it was like everything was seemed so great because the crowd was so into it in this one it was uh i don't want to say it was as bad as the pandemic but i'm watching it thinking oh this is like the pandemic where the one good thing is is during the pandemic, you know, it's like CMLL sucks during the pandemic because Lucha Libre without crowd noise looks completely stupid. WWE sucks during the pandemic because that style, that, that what they do is so geared towards Pavlovian responses and things like that. And you're doing these things that are actually completely stupid if the crowd's not working with you. So it looks stupid. But the New Japan thing is like watching a UFC because it's hard hitting and it's like a real fight and it's okay. And so like I'm watching this stuff and like these matches are really good even without the crowd. But goddamn, I wish I could hear the crowd. It felt like it was like it felt to me like it was probably like the San Jose show, which was which had a completely awesome crowd. But people didn't know it unless they were in the building. And I actually haven't um, I guess probably tomorrow morning people who are in the building or or will probably hear the show and go and tell me, oh no, it was a dead crowd, or it wasn't. But it was like you just couldn't hear that crowd for you know the crowd response, and especially like with Moxley and Shota going thirty four minutes. Um, and I mean, it was an awesome match, even with no crowd. But you know, still thirty four minutes when uh, you're not hearing the crowd is uh, it can be tough. Royce Isaacs and Jarrell Nelson against Tom Lawler and Fred Rosser. I was very surprised by this finish because this was set up by an angle where the heels cut off Tom's hair and fed his hair to Fred Rosser. Yeah. And they do the match. Babyface make their big comeback. And then suddenly Isaacs gave Tom a pile driver. Jarrell came off top with a flying elbow. And they pinned him clean. Heels yeah. won clean in this match well, where the Babyface were trying to get revenge. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that the bigger picture was that they're trying to get, um, you know, uh, Isaacs and Nelson into, uh, you know, against Hikaleo and Phantasm. Well, of course, that's that's the deal. But I mean, yeah, this was a uh, a chance. I mean, it's a surprise there, but a revenge for a haircutting and hair feeding. Yeah, well, well, cleanly defeated. Well, they can always come back later after these guys have their title shot. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. 
wrestlingobserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.